So let us discuss an important concept, uh, uh, what is called the four batch diagrams. See, the four batch diagrams developed by the Marcel four batch. So that's why those diagrams are given with the name. And in fact, these are also called potential pH diagrams. Potential pH diagrams. That means on the y axis, we will take the potential, and on the x axis, we will take the pH. So that's why they are also called potential pH diagrams and also called electrochemical phase diagrams. We know in material science the phase diagrams where we will talk about only the phases. But here along with the phases because all reactions are of electrochemical in nature, these diagrams are also called electrochemical phase diagrams because the electron is also involved in the chemical reactions, they also called electrochemical phase So four names. Either four batch diagrams or EHPH. What is EHPH means? EH means potential. Potential pH diagrams or electrochemical phase diagrams. Okay. Now what it tells these four, four batch diagrams will talk about the potential drawn on the y axis versus the pH. So you know what is pH? pH is what is pH? So minus log H plus, actually the definition of pH equal minus log H plus means whenever the concentration of H plus ions varies, you are, you are all other parameters will going to affect because the, whether it, it is in the acidic in nature or in the basic nature or in the neutral nature, the pH only will tell about the things. So the pH is minus log H plus. Yeah, the main objectives of the Kohlberg diagrams are, you look at here. It shows the direction of the various reactions at given pH and potential. It shows various directions. So these diagrams will give various directions for a given pH and a potential. Now you look at the diagram. This, this diagram is entirely divided into three segments. You see this portion. This portion is called corrosion. You see the right hand portion, this portion. Uh, the marking, you observe the marking. So this line entirely demarcates the other segments. So this, this, this entire portion is called passivity. Now the down portion is immunity. Now what do you mean by these things? If you carefully observe, if I draw potential versus pH, I could able to identify the materials to fall in three segments. Either they may fall in corrosion, either they may fall in passivity, or they may fall in immunity. Now let us understand what do you mean by all these things. You already know what is corrosion. So what is corrosion? The materials which will undergo oxidation. That means what? Ions, metal ions will be stable here. Is it not? So what is stable in corrosion? Fe2 plus is stable. Iron will become Fe2 plus because Fe gives us Fe2 plus plus electrons. So iron is losing. That losing is oxidation. So that is stable in this zone because corrosion we are talking means metal ion is thermodynamically stable in this space. Is it clear? So corrosion means the, the, the place where your oxidation takes place and the metal ion is thermodynamically stable. Because we have to talk about the stability of the phases because the diagrams are the phase diagrams. We have to talk about the stability. So metal ion is stable in this zone. Now let us come to this zone. What is this zone? Passivity. We discussed passivity. What is passivity? What is passivity? Sometimes losing the chemical reactivity by formation of a metal oxide layer. The form of metal oxide will not pass the further oxygen to react to the surface. That's what the passivity we discussed. With. Is it not? See chromium will form chromium oxide layer. So this chromium oxide layer of this much thickness will not pass the further oxygen to reach the surface because this is a barrier. So oxygen cannot cross this barrier or even electron cannot pass this barrier. That's what we discussed in the passivity. The best example I given is silicon. Silicon quickly forms silicon oxide layer. So this, this oxide layer is inert. It will not pass the electron. So that is why silicon solar cells will fail if it forms silica. That is SAO2. So now you tell me what is passivity zone? What is thermodynamically stable here? What is thermodynamically stable here? 
oxide is permanently stable is it not what is passivity passivity means formation of some oxide layer losing the chemical reactivity suddenly a metal will form an oxide layer which will not pass the oxygen so corrosion will be stopped because of this layer so what is thermodynamically stable here oxide is stable here oxide is stable here here ion is stable metal ion is stable metal ion not metal metal ion is stable here thermodynamically metal oxide is stable here metal oxide now what is immunity immunity means it will not undergo corrosion it will not form passive layer it is thermodynamically stable that's why it is immune that means it will it will never go corrosion at all so what is stable here metal is stable that means iron will be iron only in this zone is it clear now all the three zones immunity zone corrosion zone and then passive zone corrosion zone metal ion is thermodynamically stable where corrosion takes place oxidation takes place metal oxide is stable here metal oxide because that oxide layer is acting as a barrier for passage of oxygen to reach the surface fine so metal oxide is stable here metal is stable here because it is showing immunity it will never undergo corrosion or it will never undergo the oxide layer formation clear now now you look at carefully the zones which has divided based on the e and ph let us say i am a ph at 7 so where is ph 7 pH is seven, of course here. Okay. Now, when pH is seven, let us say my 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 potential is almost zero. So where I will lie? pH is seven, and the potential is zero. So where I will lie? If if I if I draw something like this, so somewhere I will lie here. That means I am in passive zone. Fine. All the pH is seven. My potential is negative potential. So where I will lie? pH is seven. My potential is a negative value. So where I will lie? Immunity zone. Or when pH is, let us say pH is some three or four, and my potential are highest. Where I will lie? Corrosion zone. So I can have, or I can play with potential and pH in such a way that I can be in the zone where I like. Clear now? So if I know, if I know iron. Will be undergoing corrosion. Then I can play with pH and potential. Is it not? See, already know iron will get corroded. Where it will get corroded in this zone only. That means <coughs> if this is the potential pH diagram for iron, I already know that this is the zone. Then what I do in order to prevent corrosion? What I do? I just manipulate the pH and potential so that I will come out of this zone so that corrosion I can stop for the iron. Is it not? See, if I, if my pHs and potentials are such a way that if iron corrosion will be in this zone, I will just manipulate the pH and potential. I just go ahead with the what you call the pH change. I just go with the alkaline pHs. So what will happen if I go to pH of some nine or ten? I will be falling in this zone rather than in this zone. So is it not I am stopping the corrosion of iron by forming some oxide layer, bringing to passivity zone where I can inhibit the corrosion? Is it clear now? So what is the diagrams will give? These diagrams will give directions. Directions. Then what has to first stop it to? It shows the directions of the various reactions at a given pH and potential. If I could manipulate, for example, I know that iron will corrode in this zone. Let us. I will go ahead with the alkaline pHs. See, acidic pHs definitely undergo corrosion because you know acidic environments. H plus ions are more often there. So what will happen if H plus ions are there? H plus ions are good oxidizing agents. They try to pull the electrons. So definitely corrosion will be more. So what I do instead of H plus to be more, I do H plus ions to be at a higher pH. So I will fall in alkaline zones. So alkaline zones I will fall in passivity zone, or I will be in the immunity zone if my potentials are negative. So there is no need of corrosion at all. Is it clear? So those that is the main important. Of the EH-PH diagrams, EH-PH means potential versus pH, or electrochemical phase diagrams. Okay, so that is the first object too, and then what it will give? It will give the compositions at various segments. We will discuss. You got now understood? Yeah. What are the characteristics of the phase diagrams? You see. 
pH is plotted on the horizontal axis. We have seen, right? And the potential on the y-axis. That's why these are all called potential pH diagrams. Now, the horizontal lines represent electron transfer reactions. Very important. What is horizontal lines? <laughs> See in the in the in the diagram. Let me go back again. What is called horizontal lines? pH. Horizontal lines are called no axis is pH. No, if I draw any a, any line which is horizontal to the x-axis, they are called electron transfer reactions. Why they are called electron transfer reactions? Just go back and you think of. You see? See, this is the pH. Fine. Now, for example, I, I developed a pH diagram for some material and I got some a line like this. Straight line horizontal to the x-axis. And what is the meaning of that? <coughs> x-axis pH. Now I got a line in a phase diagram horizontal to the x-axis. That means what? Even if I change any pH, the potential is constant. That means what? There is no change of pH at all. That means what? pH independent. You are getting or not? See, let us say this is the line. See, I got a line like this. So what is the meaning of this line? Even if I change the pH, my potential is not going to change. Constant potential. I am obtaining constant potential even if I change the pH. That means what? If my pH is 0, I am getting same value. pH is 7, I am getting same value. That means what? pH independent. pH is not at all depending. I am, I am changing the pH. I am not getting any potential value. So, horizontal lines are always pH independent. Is it not? pH of 7 also same value. pH of 0 also same value. Now, if pH is independent, what is dependent? Either pH or potential. There are only two axes and ordinate. So, pH independent means potential dependent. So, potential dependent means what is going to happen? Electron transfer only going to happen. Is it not? How the potential will change? If any electron comes into picture, the potential will be changed. That's what we discussed when electrode is dipped in electrolyte. If there is a charge transfer, the potential will be developed. That potential is called electron potential. So, when the potential will be dependent means only electron will be transferring. So, horizontal lines are called, horizontal lines are called electron transfer reactions. They are pH, they are pH independent. pH independent. Now, what about the vertical lines? Go back. See, let us say, I obtained a, 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 a straight line like this, vertical line. So what do you mean by this? Even though I am changing my potential values from 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, but my pH is constant. So there is no variation of potential here. My potential is 7, 8, 9, but there is no effect of pH. pH is constant. So that means what? There is no variation of the potential, which is not influencing the pH. So, potential independent or pH dependent. Is it not? Are you getting or not? Potential independent because I am varying the potential. I am not getting any change in the change in the pH values. See, if I, if I change this, if this is also changed, that means there is a relation between potential and pH. But here I am changing the potential values, but my pH is not going to be changed. So potential independent or pH dependent, fine. So that is what the vertical lines represent. You look at here. So vertical lines represent potential independent, but pH dependent. So what will be pH dependent? So what will be transferring? What will be transferring? In the previous case, what is transferring? Electrons are transferring. In this case, H plus. Because what is pH? pH is minus log. That means H plus ions are transferring. Fine. H plus ions are transferring. So let me give an example here so that again we'll come back. So I'll, I'll show you an example. So this also, this you understood now. I told you. Immunity. Which is stable in immunity zone? Metal is stable. Immunity zone. Metal is stable. Corrosion which is stable? Metal ion is stable. Fe2 plus is stable because iron is going to get oxidized in the corrosion. Passivity which is stable? Metal oxide is stable. Okay. 
uh, maybe I can uh, show you one one yeah just, just, just look at here so that you will come to know independent of x plus ions so independent of x plus ions means independent of ph example i'm saying x plus ions means uh, not is almost equal to ph so independent of x plus means independent of ph that means dependent on potential that means electron transfer look at the reaction no, this is the example for independent of both H plus and electrons. That means, no, no, you come to the case where independent of pH. Yes, pH independent. So, pH independent equation. Fe2 plus plus gives us Fe3 plus plus electrons. So, electron will be involved. Fine. Come to here. pH dependent. And the potential independent. pH dependent means H plus will be there. So, you look at here, H plus here. So Fe2 plus plus 2H2O two gives us FeOH twice plus 2H two plus. Both are independent. H plus ions, electrons, both are independent. That means what? Both are independent means there won't be any electron, there won't be any H plus. Look at the reaction. Fe2 plus plus 2OH minus gives us FeOH twice. Now see the last case. Both are dependent. Means there is a potential variation, there is an electron variation. So look at the reaction 2 Fe2 plus plus 3 H2O gives us Fe2O3 plus 6 H plus plus 2 electron. You see, I put in the yellow mark. So when pH is involved, H plus ion is involved. When potential is involved, electron is involved. If both are involved, both will be there. If nothing is involved, nothing will be there. You will not see any H plus, you will not see an electron. Understood now? Four types of reactions I give just given with the iron case only because you are more often study the iron corrosion. Look at the four types of reactions. So you can classify in the diagram where they are. Whether they are pH dependent, potential dependent, pH independent, or potential independent, or both independent. Okay? Both independent means? Both independent means? There won't be any pH, there won't be any potential. Means there won't be any H plus, there won't be any electron. First example. So what is this example? Fe2 plus is reacting with 2 OH minus, giving us Fe OH twice. There won't be any electron involved, there won't be any H plus ion involved. Clear? Clear? Understood now? Go back again. We'll, have, we'll, we'll discuss the characteristics of phase diagrams. Yeah. So now you understood what is horizontal lines. Horizontal lines are electron transfer reactions or pH independent. Okay, vertical lines, potential independent. Sloping lines. What is sloping lines? See, potential is on y, pH on x. Now I got a straight line like this with some slope. So what do you mean by this? Potential is varying. And uh, pH is also varying, is it not? See, if I talk, uh, let us go to the same example. Yeah, you see this cup? You see this cup? Let us say I have some pH of some 6. What is the value of pH uh, potential around something value? Now I got to pH 7. I have just moved here. What is the pH? pH also moved down. That means what? Potential pH are having some relation. It's not like the either vertical or horizontal in the previous case. That means what? There is a relation between potential and pH. Now, what is the relation between potential and pH? We have studied yesterday non stick equation. What is non stick equation? E equal to E naught minus 2.303 RT by NF into log activity. What is activity? Concentration. Concentration means H plus L. So, that is not H plus L connected to the pH uh, e potential. So these lines, these lines have the relation obeying the non stick equation. So using non stick equation, this will be developed. This equation can be developed. Getting now? So all pH diagrams or potential electrochemical phase diagrams will be developed using non stick equation only. If you know non stick equation, this diagram can be built up. So wherein? Potential is on the y, pH on the x. Okay. 
so those are the characteristics the sloping lines i have given now all the concentration of the metal ions is assumed to be 10 power minus 6 okay. the concentration is 10 power minus 6 temperature is 25 fixed temperature is fixed fine so with that conditions these diagrams will be developed okay now this uh, this is the uh, text you can go through it because i have already discussed this text now we we'll look at the regions potential on the y ph on the x now the ph can be from around 0 to 13 or 14 and potential can be negative potentials and positive potentials now i can divide the entire zone into four parts because the pH is 0 to 14, maybe at pH 7 we can call as neutral, below 7 is called acidic zone, above 7 is called alkaline zone. So acidic, below 7, alkaline, above 7. Now similarly, potential, negative potentials and positive potential. Negative potentials are all called reducing and positive potentials are called oxidizing. So accordingly, four zones, oxidizing acidic, reducing acidic. Oxidizing alkaline, reducing alkaline. Now your figure can be drawn or kept under any zone, depending on by choice. So oxidizing acidic, oxidizing alkaline, reducing acidic, reducing alkaline. Four regions. Okay. Now let us uh, let us look at a very important diagram. Maybe I can show you with the iron case. And now we look at here here. pH is equal to minus log H plus. Change of 1 pH unit, change this experience by a factor of 10. Why it has written like that? Change of 1 pH will change H plus, H plus by a factor of 10. Change of 1 pH, change of H plus will be 10. Why 10? Because logarithm base is 10. So 10 power 1. pH equal 1, 10 power 1. So H plus will change by 10. 10 power 1 means 10. That is why if you remember, I told you the significance of non equation is 10 fold change for 15 and millivolt. Why the 10 fold change? Because every H plus ion will change by a factor 10 if pH changes by 1. Because the definition is pH is equal to minus log H plus. pH is 1 means H plus will be logarithm means base 10. So 10 power 1. So, tenfold change will be absorbed for every 15 and millivolt. Okay. So, we assume activity to be 1. Now, this is the uh, types I have explained. Now, you look at the iron case. This is the iron diagram, iron four batch diagram. You see, iron four batch diagram, we have small box here and then a sloping line. And then there is like another sloping line, another vertical line, horizontal line, and then some sloping lines. Note this dotted line is called O2, another dotted line is called H2, O2, and then H2. And these zones are with their ions. Now, see this zone, Fe3 plus is stable, already written. This zone, Fe2 plus is stable, that's why corrosion. This zone, immunity, iron will un never undergo, never undergo corrosion if it is in lying in this zone. Now passive, what is passive I told? Oxide layers. Look at this, this zone, passive zone, Fe2 O3 oxide, oxide layer formed. Fe3 O4, that's again one more oxide, passive zone. Fe OH twice. That's also a hydroxide layer we can call as something like an oxide layer. So passive zone. So these three zones are passive, this is the corrosion zone and this is the emission zone. Now after looking at this uh, iron diagram, see you, you can see this is also corrosion zone where ion is stable. Because what is corrosion we talk? Metal ion is thermodynamically stable. Here the metal ion is Fe3 plus. Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus, both are oxidized of iron only. What is Fe3 plus? Losing 3 electrons is called Fe3 plus. Is it? Or the oxidation state is 3. So Fe gives us Fe3 plus plus 3 electrons. 
So this is again corrosion zone, corrosion zone, immunity zone, passive zone. Clear? So how these uh, lines are calculated? Now see question. So if you look at the calculations are not in the syllabus, but you look at see this is the calculation. Calculation of line one. What is line one? This is the line one. How they are calculated? You look at here. Using non stick question only. Okay. So they will they will get the relation between E and pH. They will get a relation between E and pH. They will they will vary the pH value. They will get the E value. So they will plot. If they plot, they will get a line. Okay, so that is line one calculation. So what is line one? Independent of pH. Why independent of pH? Because it's a horizontal line. Horizontal lines are pH independent. Because see, even though I change pH from here to here, the value of pH is constant. So pH is independent. It's not influencing. So horizontal line one is independent of pH. So calculation of line 2, line 2 is the bottom line, so this line, that is immunity zone line. So now they are calculated, look at the same thing. See E equal to E naught plus Y naught fine and yesterday we have discussed the non stick question. So you get a relation and they can plot. Slopping line. See slopping line, E, H and E dependent, is it not? See, potential is varying, pH is varying. So, pH, pH are depending. So, you look at the calculation of this thing. Of course, not in the syllabus, but you can go through it. Because you know Nernst equation, how they are plugging the values to get that sloping line. Calculation of this horizontal H2 line. Similarly, horizontal, not horizontal, sloping H2 line, sloping O2 line. Now, very important is, we have in the syllabus, pH diagram of water, pore patch diagram of water because water pore patch diagram is very important because that is helping the iron to get corroded. Now what is water? H2O. Fine. So from H2O either you will get H2 or you will get O2 because what is the reaction for uh, formation of H2O? Half H2 plus half O2. So H2 plus O2 gives less H2O. So if you can make stoichiometric balance you will get two zones. See, A, B. So this B line is oxygen, this A line is hydrogen, and the between zone is water. That means what? For pore by diagram of water, if I draw potential as pH, I will get three zones. In the first zone, where hydrogen is stable. In the middle zone, water is stable. Above zone, oxygen is stable. That means what? If I maintain pH and potential such a way that if they are in this zone, hydrogen will be formed. That means what? If I am in alkaline pH, if I am in acidic or alkaline pH, but my potentials are lower pH, that means that means reducing pH, reducing potentials, I will always in a zone of hydrogen. If my potentials are oxidizing potentials, my pHs are either 0 or but the potentials are very high, I will be end up with the oxygen. So how do we calculate these two? Same non-stick equation, you look at the calculation. Look at the calculation. H2O, half O2 plus 2 H plus plus 2 electrons. So use the formula. I will get a relation between potential versus pH. So I will vary the pH, I will get the values of potential. So I will draw a line. So that line is similarly for the bottom line. I will read up relation between E and pH. So that I will get down line. So this A and B, go back, E, A and B, you see, upper stability limit for water. That means what? Till this part only water will be there. If you just cross this, you will get oxygen. Water will not be in water form. It will be in oxygen form. Similarly, this is the highest limit of water till this zone. If it crosses this zone, now water will not be in water. It will be in hydrogen. 
so i can manipulate potential in ph such a way that either i can be in hydrogen or i can be in oxygen i can play the role play play with water such that i can i can make form oxygen or i can make form hydrogen okay now you look at the potentials you see for the a E equal 1.23. That's where it end up with 1.5. That means if my potentials are more than 1.23, I will yield up with oxygen. If my potentials are more than 1.23 volts, that means if I took just water, if I put two electrodes, and if I potential, if I apply the potential, if my potentials are more than 1.23, I will see oxygen bubbles. That's not the indication. Similarly, if I apply potentials which are less than Zero negative potential cell. If I apply, I will get hydrogen bubbles on the other electrode. So this is what water electrolysis. If we conduct water electrolysis experiment, you can see on one electrode oxygen formation, another electrode hydrogen formation. So this is the pH potential diagram, where you can know in which phase water is there, in which time oxygen can be formed, in which time hydrogen can be formed. Is it clear? So once you took water, once you put the electrodes, water will be in water only. Unless otherwise, if you won't play any pH, if you won't play any potential. But if you start applying the potentials, now water will not be in water. Water will go to oxygen or water will go to hydrogen because of the manipulation of the potentials. You can just do this simple experiment. Take a glass of water, put any electrode, and you apply some battery. Connect your battery and apply potentials. You see bubbles formation either on one electrode. So if I am putting a potential of two or three, more than one point two three, I'll get oxygen bubbles. If my potentials are less than zero or at least zero, I start absorbing the hydrogen bubbles. This is what water splitting reaction. Water splitting reaction. Okay. So this is what that uh, diagram. I know this is the diagram for the aluminium. Aluminum C, three zones: immunity zone, corrosion zone, passive zone. And very uh, interesting thing is, after passivation, you can observe the corrosion for aluminum. So, what is going to happen? We discussed some factors in the last class. So, maybe this oxide layer may be peeling off after some time. If I change pHs, I am again prone into corrosion. So that is why, even though when your food is packed, even though when your food is packed with aluminium foil, what is going to happen? If if my if my conditions are such a way that if I am falling in the alkaline pHs, again that aluminium foil will also get damaged and you will be under corrosion stage. Okay, clear. So this is the uh, pore bag diagram uh, for. I think aluminium, and then this is for iron. Okay, yeah. So this is for the copper. Look at the copper. Copper, CuO, Cu2O. Okay. Fine. I think I have put for the gold also. Yeah, you put for the gold also. You can see. Now let us end up with the limitations. So what is the limitations of pH diagrams? These EH pH diagrams does not take into account of the kinetics. That is the first limitation. It does not include the kinetics. So uh, this pH the diagrams where we are talking about potential and pH is not taking into account of the kinetics part. The rate of reactions it is not including. That is the biggest limitation. Another limitation is it assumes so many things like species activity. Sometimes it may be equal to one. They will assume in preparing the diagrams. Okay, and for the complex compounds, we cannot prepare the EHPH diagrams. Clear now? So understood what I discussed the pore batch diagrams, pore batch diagrams, potential pH diagrams will give the directions. Will give the directions of the reactions when pH and potential is given. Where we are, whether we are in corrosion zone, whether we are in immunity zone, whether we are in passive zone, so I can play around. Okay, so if I know potential diagram for iron, I can play 
or I can inhibit the iron to not to go corrosion by just manipulating the pH potential. Okay, thank you.